All right, guys, I'm really excited to be here with Robbie from Beaver Builder. And uh, this has been a conversation that's been a while in the making because he's been traveling around the earth doing a million things. So uh, really, really exciting guy. I think you're going to really enjoy getting to know him and in the process, learning some cool stuff about Beaver Builder and how that page builder is going to be uh, a pretty cool tool with regard to you know, setting up websites for your clients. So, uh, so Robbie, why don't you kind of introduce yourself a little bit and talk about um, maybe a little bit about the, the trip you just took and, uh, and also you know, kind of what roles you're, you're playing in the Beaver Builder world. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Robbie McCullough. I'm one of the co-founders of Beaver Builder. Uh, we've got a team of about 16 people now and it's a distributed team. So we all work from home or work from wherever we are. Uh, Beaver Builder is a page builder plugin for WordPress. And I've been trying to take advantage of the distributed nature of our company and do some extended traveling this year. So Lee, I really appreciate your flexibility. We were trying to schedule this podcast while I was uh, traveling in Asia and the time zones, like I were just getting, I've done a lot of working from the road and I feel pretty comfortable with it, but being in the, the time zone on the other, other side of the planet really threw me off when it came to scheduling meetings and things like that. So I was, I was having a bit of, bit of friction there, but, um, yeah, I got back to the West Coast. I'm based in California uh, about a week ago. So um, I'm actually down in, in Mexico right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. I'm sure you're seeing some really cool stuff. Well, uh, well one of the things that I wanted to, to, to talk to you about, and it's probably kind of on the forefront of everybody's mind with regard to page builders, is what role does Gutenberg play in all of this? Because you know, prior to that, there basically was no in, in any page builder of any sort inside of WordPress, but now there's blocks and Gutenberg is in the mix and it's, uh, but it's not at the level that, that Beaver Builder is. What do you think that, you know, how does that, what are your thoughts about how all that plays together? It was a really interesting couple of years with the core team introducing the idea of Gutenberg and then building it. Um, I think our team, we were at WordCamp US when it was announced and it was a little bit nerve wracking at the time because it did kind of sound like, you know, core was, was getting into the page builder space. We didn't really know what to make of that. But then as the project kind of started developing and Gutenberg started coming together, uh, it, it's, it's been less of a threat in the sense that it really is just focusing on the, the content editing piece. Um, so in phase two and three of Gutenberg, we know the core team is going to uh, continue, you know, implementing Gutenberg uh, throughout the rest of your WordPress and kind of extending the, the customization capabilities of it. Um, but we're, we're still pretty confident there's going to be a good niche for page builders in WordPress. Uh, Gutenberg really has to, I think, cater to a huge number, you know, WordPress powers. It's always going up a little bit, but I think roughly like 33% of the web right now. Uh, so it's got a massive audience that, that it needs. It's, it's kind of needs to be the lowest common denominator in the sense that anyone using WordPress needs to be able to hop in there and use it. So, um, one of the, the directions we went in response to Gutenberg was kind of trying to double down on, on our professional and, and power users, people that were either freelancers or agencies, um, people and teams that were building websites for other people and you know, using WordPress in that, in that capacity every day, as opposed to maybe someone that would be going for like a Squarespace or someone that was just getting started with a, with a new website. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. So that's kind of leads into the next question I kind of wanted to ask you was like, who do you feel like is like the ideal, ideal target? Like, like, who are you building Beaver Builder for? And maybe who are you not building it for? Yeah, it's, it's funny. We took, it took us a little while. So we just celebrated our fifth birthday, which is wild looking back on, on the five years and kind of what a journey it's been and that, you know, we're still doing this five years in. <laughs> um, but when we, when we first got started, we didn't really have a good idea of who our customer or ideal customer would be. Um, the, the kind of page builder space, when we created Beaver Builder, we were a web agency. So we were building websites for clients and we sort of built this page builder tool as something that we were originally just going to use internally. It was a tool we wanted for ourselves. Um, but then when we re released it, we realized that page builders could really benefit users that weren't particularly web savvy or maybe like a small business owner that just needed a website but didn't particularly want to learn um, front-end development or HTML and CSS. 
Uh, so we thought, oh, you know, this could be like a tool for someone that would use like a Squarespace or a website builder, maybe like a more beginning user. Um, I think as, as time went on, we realized that, that most of our customers, most of the people that were paying for page builders were in that kind of more professional, either freelancer or agency category. So that's that's the, the segment we've really tried to, again, double down on and, and, and tune our feature development for. Um, but then that's not to say too, I think you get the, we kind of call them like the do it yourselfers that, that find WordPress and, and find Beaver Builder because they want to get their you know hands dirty and, and build their own website. So uh, we still try and keep things um, simple and, and keep the UI intuitive so that someone can jump in and pick it up and use it as well. I noticed that like when I was kind of exploring Beaver, Beaver Builder myself, like I, I know that there's all kinds of really cool keyboard shortcuts that can really make it really fast to do stuff, especially like as you begin to use it more and more, you begin to be able to get faster and faster and faster. And, um, and also the, the reusable sections like content sections where you can just kind of save this section and say, Hey, you know, I might want that on another page and, um, and be able to kind of really speed up your development in, in that way. Um, what are some other things that you've kind of built into the system that sort of makes you say we're really targeting um, like the more professional people as opposed to um, the kind of the do-it-yourselfers or people that might be considering like a Wix website or something? Hmm. Th those are good. Those are really good examples. Uh, we recently released a, about a hundred um, of those like kind of modular website pieces like you mentioned. So uh, when we first started with with pre created designs, we would do these full page templates. So it'd be like a mock, you know, restaurant website and it had the, the header and the, you know, the menu section and the opening hours and it was this whole kind of one page design. Uh, but we moved a little bit towards doing more modular pieces so that you could kind of mix and match and, and, and build out a page a lot quicker but still have some like kind of flexibility and freedom like we didn't want the same boilerplate template being used over and over again um, we've also started to add more uh, more features that that kind of leverage um, front-end development like like we, we recently recently added some like like box shadows and text shadows and some we kind of started bringing some like CSS features um, were available into Beaver Builder some design features uh, whereas when we were first getting started, we were really reluctant to add in uh, features that like and, and particularly um, like kind of knobs and levers to tweak things that were going to be too confusing for a beginning user. But we started kind of like go easing up a little bit on on the, the things that we've been adding in. Um, we're also we're working on a new product right now called Assistant. Uh, and, and currently it's, it's, it's a free uh, plugin in the WordPress repo, but what it is, it's like a collection of productivity apps and we're hoping to leverage that kind of like a platform. So we have these, it's, we, we compare it a little bit to like Chrome developer tools, but for WordPress, it's kind of this space where you can have a number of different apps. Uh, and we're really looking forward to kind of building out some more advanced Beaver Builder uh, functionality in there but then also like like one of the ideas we've had that, that's been floating around for a while is doing some sort of like a like some way to, to manage a staging site versus a live site and syncing like if you build a page and a staging site being able to push it up to a live site or vice versa uh, but that kind of functionality isn't specific to beaver builder like a lot of the problems we've been seeing or trying to solve in beaver builder would also apply to Gutenberg pages as Gutenberg's becoming more and more like a page builder so we're hoping to kind of create this sort of page builder agnostic platform to start solving more more problems in here in the future. I like that. That's really cool. That's a. Uh, I hadn't really thought about the about the, like kind of like the, the Chrome extensions like that, that you were talking about that concept. Um, but what I had thought about is like what about the theme side of things? Like so, there's Beaver Builder, which is. I don't know if a lot of people realize the difference between a page builder and a WordPress theme. And it seems like you have to have, you have to have both. You have to have the theme and you have to then put content in it. And on top of that, I think there's also some confusion over what content can I, can I control with the page builder? Can I do headers? Can I do footers? You know, or is it just a content section? Like, so, um, and I know that there's some combination of, of like the theme and the page builder that sort of might be ideal for using Beaver Builder. So when it comes to themes, like what do you recommend? Like I know you guys have a theme, but then there's also like Astra themes are out there that integrate in really well with Beaver Builder. 
what are your thoughts with regard to like, if I want to use Beaver Builder, what theme should I use? Sure. Yeah. We, we have a theme that comes with the, the pro and agency packages are the Beaver Builder theme. So of course, you know, that's like our, that's the one we use for all of our projects. Um, there's a number of kind of community created and third party themes, both uh, free and premium. Um, Astra is another, a, a great one. Generate Press. I feel if I list them off, I know I'm going to like leave off some of the big ones too. I, I'm pretty sure we have um, an article on our blog where we go over some of the, the themes that, that play really well with page builders. And then there's tons of third party. Uh, if you do a Google, like I'd recommend Google searching and doing your own, own research on that. So obviously like I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> um, but the theme space in general too with like Gutenberg is, is really interesting, right? Because Gutenberg kind of forces themes to start writing backend styles. So if you're working in Gutenberg, you're still working in like the admin area of WordPress. And you hit publish and you go and look at your page on the front end, it's going to look a little different, but there's a role for themes now to start styling the back end as well as the front end. So you can kind of like bring those two closer together. So I think it's really shaking up um, WordPress themes and theme marketplaces as well. Uh, one of my colleagues, Brent Jett, wrote a really interesting blog series. I don't know if you do show notes. If you do, I'll, I'll shoot you the link. Or um, if you look up brentjett.design, um, it's on his blog, but he wrote about, I think it's a four piece uh, article or, or he had four separate kind of interconnected articles about the future of themes. And he kind of laid out some, some pretty wild ideas. Um, like what if, you know, what if themes no longer were responsible for, for publishing or, or putting out like the header and footer, like the initial kind of markup of the page, like themes right now control your entire uh, front end output. So the, the header, the footer, the content, all of that gets generated by the theme. But like, what if we could just start using themes to kind of focus more on the, on the content piece or, or any, you know, in, a, in like a Gutenberg world, is that, is that going to benefit or, um, anyways, I'm, I'm doing a horrible job paraphrasing, but really, really interesting. Um, but then, yeah, I think back to your original question too, Gutenberg and Beaver Builder both suffer from that same problem, especially with beginning users of that. Like they only focus on the content area of your WordPress site. So, you know, your WordPress has a header, it's got content, maybe it has a sidebar and a footer and page builders only operate during that in that little content piece. Um, we have an add on called Beaver Themer, which allows you to use the page builder interface to build out headers and footers and all the rest. And then that's also the, like a big push for Gutenberg phase two is, is moving Gutenberg beyond the content area, uh, being able to create headers and menus and, and things like that. So um, yeah, I think that it's, it's interesting because like the space is changing so rapidly, right? Yeah. I wanted to ask you about Beaver Themer too. Uh, how does that like i don't know if people understand like like how does that work like is it another plugin that you install that lets you somehow change the header or can you describe a little bit about what that that actually is yeah it does a couple different things so for headers and footers the way it works is you can build out a header. So you basically say, I want to build a header. Um, you design it in like our page builder interface and then you save it. Um, and then Beaver Builder, or excuse me, Beaver Themer also has this kind of set of options that allow you to specify when you want that header to apply. So like the obvious kind of easy example is like you can just apply that header across your entire site. Say, hey, I want this to be my header. If my theme has a header, just replace it, and show that on every page. Hmm. Um, but Beaver Themer also lets you specify like, hey, I'd like this header only to show up if users are logged in or if this user is like a, a WooCommerce customer, show them this header or footer. Um, it allows you kind of dynamically uh, show or hide content depending on a number of different variables. Um, and we're hoping to like extend that out to things like you could even use like a URL slug. Like if you're doing pay per click advertising, right? Um, and you're, you're, you know that your users are coming from like a particular website or a particular source. If they're coming from Facebook or from, you know, a blog, you can, you can customize your site to kind of personalize it to, to who, who's visiting. Um, and then Beaver Themer also has, it's, this is almost like an entirely different set of functionality, but it allows you to build templates for that content area of your site. So Gutenberg and page builders, um, a good example is like WooCommerce products. If you want to build a product page uh, in Beaver Builder or Gutenberg, you have to build like a single, like this is my page for my one t-shirt. And then if I have another t-shirt, I need to build a whole different page. 
Um, and then with Themer, you can build out a template that applies to all of your products. And same thing, you can specify, like, if, if this product is a hoodie, I want to show this version of my, like, sales landing page. Or if it's a, you know, a dress, I want to show this version. And if it's a hat, I want to show this version. So you can design that template once and then apply it to, you know, if you've got a store with 100 products, um, you can apply it to all those products or say, you know, determine which which uh, template shows up for which product based on the categories and tags and things of that nature. Hmm. That's I didn't even know that. That's that's I'm learning that brand new right now. That's really cool, and it really sort of underscores what you were saying before about the difference between somebody who's just kind of blogging or whatever versus somebody who's like building a business oriented website for either themselves or for, for one of their clients, where you've got like like you know what you're just saying like if, if the, the slug of the, of, the, of the page that you're on or whatever is, is one thing, then show something. Or if you're logged in as a customer or whatever, then show another type of header or whatever. Like that's just far beyond what somebody building a Wix website would try to be able to do for themselves or whatever. So that, that really starts to illuminate the difference between what are we talking about here versus let me just point and click my way to like my piano teacher website kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, my food blog or my, my, my travel blog, right? Like the, the yeah. It gets a couple steps above what your kind of average content creator or uh, you know small business website builder might be looking for. Yeah, that's awesome. That's that's I really like that, and I didn't I didn't understand that 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 it all came together like that. So so now it sounds like there's maybe three things. There's Beaver Builder, Beaver Themer, and then the actual theme that you're using. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and then I guess again circling back to the question, I think Beaver Themer. Um, one of our friends, uh, his name's Oliver. He's one of our kind of original Beaver Builder users released a theme. That's a very bare bones. Like everything is pretty much stripped out with the idea that, um, you're going to be using Beaver Themer to create all of your theme customizations. So you can style and design your headers and footers. And, and again, going back to that question of like, what do themes look like, um, in WordPress, you know, in the future, a year, five years down the line. Um, if you're using Beaver Themer, you really don't need all that much. You just need to get that initial like header and footer markup and pretty much everything in the body of your page you can create using, using um, a, a drag and drop tool. And I think we're going to see the same thing happening with Gutenberg as Gutenberg starts taking over other areas of your WordPress website. Like if you can build out a header and a footer in Gutenberg and then d design your pages in Gutenberg, what is the theme what does the theme really do? Is it just like, is, is there any markup involved or is it just focusing on styling or how much of the styling belongs in like CSS or should be done using like a tool like Gutenberg or, or Beaver Builder? Hmm. Interesting. So, um, so if somebody wanted to, to really go all in and uh, like, a, like a professional kind of, you know, digital marketing web developer, like a professional WordPress consultant, and they wanted to use Beaver Builder, um, and I, I, of course, there's other ways you can go about it, right? You can, you can get some Astro theme or whatever, or, but, uh, but as, as far as like, if, if I just wanted to do everything like, like the Robbie way, right? Like, you know, based on what, what, what you guys would do. At, at your <laughs> That's own a horrible time. idea. Don't do it that way. No, <laughs> it would never get done if you do it that way. <laughs> That's hilarious. But, uh, but ba based on what you were just saying, like, you know, like I understand that it, I don't want you to have to say, oh, well, you're so much better than these theme pe people or whatever, because there's other options and people can explore the other options. But if you just kind of wanted to go kind of all in with Beaver Builder and you got the Beaver Builder page builder, you got Beaver Themer, and then you got, I guess, the, the, the actual theme that you guys kind of put all together. Is that everything that you need to, to, to really do this? Or, or, or do you recommend some other add-ons or... Like basically what I'm asking is like, if I want to be a beaver builder ninja, what do I <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, that's a good question. I, I mean, so if I'm honest, I feel like this is where I should like throw in the, the plug and, and uh, do like the knife salesman thing where like, if you get this, they'll throw in this and that and that. But, like, so on, on my personal blog, I just use beaver build, builder right now. I'm actually, I feel I really shouldn't say this, but I'm using the 2019 WordPress theme. I'm not even using our uh, theme right now. Although part of that was because I really wanted to learn about the new uh, WordPress, the 2019 theme and get into the guts of it. And I kind of, I use my personal site kind of as like my, my testing and, and learning, you know, ground. We, we run everything Beaver Builder on our Beaver Builder site. So um, there was a little while there where I wasn't really experimenting with new themes and new tools because I was all Beaver Builder. So it was kind of, it's kind of like, like uh, my own, you know, development and, and research happens on, on my blog. Um, but, you know, I think 
for any project you're working on, a, a good piece of advice would be to just kind of get what you need as you need it. Um, you can get really far with a free theme, WordPress, and the free version of Beaver Builder. Um, and then if you hit limits there, uh, maybe you want to upgrade Beaver Builder so you can get access to, like one of the big differentiators between our free and premium versions is the modules that are available. So things like slideshows and pricing tables, like we have a bunch of premium modules that are available in our in our paid version. Um, another, I guess another big kind of differentiator between our premium products and free products, both the builder and the theme, is you get access to support. Uh, so one of the things we're really proud of and, and work really hard to, to keep a really high quality level is in our customer support. Uh, and if you're, you know, working, um, doing client work, if you have customers that are depending on you uh, to, to be able to fix problems if and when they arise, having, having a good support system, I think, is crucial to that because, you know, I'd like to, you know, say our code is perfect and it never has bugs, but of course that's not true, right? And like things happen, issues happen, or um, sometimes it's not even like a software bug, but people write in with questions like, hey, I, you know, I saw this design, my client wants me to create this like kind of this style website. I've seen people do it with Beaver Builder, but I don't know exactly how. Can you guys give me some guidance or advice? Um, so yeah, we take a lot of pride in, in offering really good support. Um, and then I guess similar or on that same level, we have a really fantastic community of Beaver Builder users. So there's a lot of um, user generated tutorials and content out there, uh, both videos and blog posts and things of that nature. Uh, and we have a, like a thriving Facebook group and Slack group too. So similarly, if you need to jump in and say, hey, you know, I've got a question, like I'm using Beaver Builder and I really want to use like this plugin or I really want to accomplish this, like has anyone done this before, have any recommendations? Um, I think that community is really helpful for kind of, I like to call it like tapping into the, the hive mind, you know, like there's questions that are best answered by, by lots of people that have had lots of different experiences and, and as opposed to maybe someone who's just done it once before. That's awesome. That's really cool. I really like the incremental approach that you were just that you were just kind of laying out there. So rather than kind of going all in and getting all of the premium versions of all of the things and kind of overwhelming yourself all at once, to you know just kind of start at you know at what's doing okay for now, and then like as a legitimate need arises for something else, you know get that extra thing. Like if you need a pricing table or something like that, to kind of you know upgrade just the uh, the page builder <laughs> part. I know it's like tempting and, and don't, again, I'm being a bad marketer here. Like if that's, if you're the type that likes to just jump in with two feet and <laughs> you know, I know like I've been doing a lot of photography as I've been traveling and I've been really tempted to like, like I really want to get a new camera and I want to get like five new lenses and then I need, you know, like this new camera is going to be generating much bigger files. So I want to get a new computer and then like I hear the iPad pro has a great version of Lightroom on it. And like, <laughs> it's definitely tempting to like want to do all the things at once, but. I guess that's the advice I tell myself is like, take a step back. Like, what do you really need to, to get the job done? What's really going to be the most beneficial? Are there any kind of um, like, if you're going to kind of lay the groundwork, one of the things I like to do is make sure that the groundwork I'm laying will support what I want to do in the future. Like maybe I don't get all the things all at once right off the bat, but I don't want to like get to a point where like, Oh, shucks. Uh, I got to redo everything now because you know, the, the foundation I laid was just not strong enough to uphold what I really need. And so uh, like, like we, we were talking about like the different kind of content sections, like the modules that you could kind of put into sites and stuff like that. Is there anything you need to be aware of? Like if you're starting out with like the 2019 theme instead of the, the, the Beaver Builder official theme or something like that. And then you're like, oh, well, you know, I want to do something more now. And then you realize, oh, well, I have to rip out my whole theme and then put yeah. another one on top. Like, would it be would it be a good idea to just go ahead and at least just start out with maybe the uh, like the pro version of, of the Beaver Builder and then maybe the, the theme that comes along with it and then maybe you add Beaver Themer later on? Would that be a good a good starting way to start? I, I, yeah, I do. I think it would be. I think. Um... Because, yeah, what you're describing right there is kind of, and when you're running a, a client services, like a web business, this comes up a lot, this, this, um, this balance between, like, time and money, right? Like, if you're going to try and do everything with free tools, it's usually going to cost you a lot more time. Um, and, and you'll run into those roadblocks, too, where, yeah, if you're using, like, a free theme or the 2019 theme and you want to accomplish something, if you get, you know, halfway down the road and realize that you can't, like, you hit a roadblock, you're going to have to turn around and go back and start over. 
Um, and so depending on like where you are with your business or how much you value either your time or money, like what that looks like for you, starting with the pro version of Beaver Builder um, that includes the theme would probably be a really good, a really good kind of um, fail safe or, or, you know, you can, you can get as far as you need to, I think, with those two tools. Um, I guess the, also, the first thing I thought too, this is kind of separate from Beaver Builder, but is your like web hosting account too. I think in terms of like foundation, having to move sites from hosts is such a pain. Um, and it's, it's always really tempting to go for one of those kind of like budget couple dollar a month hosts, um, which again, it's fine. Like if you're doing, you know, basic content, if your site isn't mission critical, if it's okay that it you know goes down or if you run into, into issues with like trying to do certain things, like having access to like the command line or getting access to your server, upgrading memory limits and download limits, things like that. Um, it's good, but yeah, I'd, I'd always recommend like starting with like a good, a good host too. Cause that's, that's when we talk about like the foundation of your website, I really do think that comes down to like the server it's running on again, separate, separate from Beaver Builder. But like if I had a dollar for every time or every minute I sat like waiting on like a customer support call with one of the hosts uh, we were using back when we were doing like budget hosts, I probably would have like paid for a premium hosting account and then some. That is, that's a really, really good point. I remember, uh, like the, I'm also one of the co-founders for cart 66 at email, uh, not email e-commerce platform. And like, I would say the majority of tickets that we get are from hosts or hosting issues. Yep. Like the, the PHP sessions aren't working or you know, just whatever it might be is uh, the host situation is such a critical thing, but you don't have to spend a million dollars either. Like there's very, like, uh, like I use flywheel a lot and I think you yeah. in the mix there for like 15 bucks a month. Uh, I know a lot of people use Kinsta. I'm not sure exactly what their price point is, but it's very similar, I think, to Flywheel. WP Engine, that's another option, which tends to be a little bit more expensive, but it's still not crazy expensive. Uh, do you have any hosts that you like to work with? Yeah, that's a tough one. We, we kind of like to be host agnostic. Um, we've, we've done like a number of different like partnerships and, and uh, I think if you're using any of the like, I want to call them like name brand WordPress hosts, you know, like there's a, there's a small handful of hosts that you see like sponsoring WordCamps and sponsoring podcasts and that are like really uh, working hard to get their name out in the WordPress community. Uh, I think, yeah, you can't really go, go, I think it starts getting like a little sketchy when you start going for those like really like kind of budget hosts that if you're Googling like, you know, like the cheapest web hosts available or, um, I guess another thought too is I'm, I'm a personally a big fan of managed WordPress hosts, like hosts that take care of updating WordPress for you, updating your server. Like there's always the option to do something like a digital ocean where you have your own VPS and um, you get like full control over your server. And that sounds really nice on paper, but then like it's really nice until something goes wrong. And if you find yourself trying to like update your server operating system or like dealing with security issues, I think things can get really hairy really quickly if you don't That's know what really you're doing there. Point. Yeah. That's a really, really good point. In fact, I, I was actually just on a podcast last week talking about this very thing. And they're like, you know, I, I actually have a DigitalOcean droplet. And like, I know a thing or two about hosting and, and, you know, I'm definitely far down the road when it comes to being overly technical when it comes to like, you know, Linux and command line stuff or whatever. So I was like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to spin up a droplet and, you know, stick Ubuntu on there and, and Shazam. Now I've got WordPress rolling. And it, all of it was great. But this was a couple of years ago. I was like out with my family. We were like out at the Potomac River and everything. And I get this email from a client on my phone. And I was like, you like my site's down. What's the matter? And I had to go like stop hanging out with the family and go do something about it. And it's like it took me a couple of hours to sort it all out. It was like this like fast CGI script thing is, you know, one of the processes had gotten out of whack and it consumed yeah. all the server resources. And so you know, I don't want to do that. And so if you can save yourself so much, I mean, what is it worth? Is it 20 bucks extra per month or whatever? And you don't have to do that anymore. It's like, that seems like a really nice, nice thing. So, um, so yeah, I, I kind of have it kind of in both areas. Like if I'm just playing around and the site doesn't matter if it goes down, like just like a development site or just trying some stuff out, just like a playground area. You know, that's one thing. But like if it's an actual site that you care about, especially a client site, you know, everything that you just said about the managed WordPress hosting is really nice. 
yeah, yeah. It, there's such a big difference with someone's paying and depending on you as opposed to like, like I mentioned too, with my personal blog, like that one I run, um, or, or, or it's just like, it's, if that thing goes down, it's totally fine. Like I could, <laughs> as long as you have a good backup, right? Like I, I could care less. So I, I just throw everything in there. Like if I want to try a new plugin or if I, I guess I don't move hosts all that often, but, but I have no problem like destroying and blowing that thing up. Cause I know I can always piece it back together again. And it's pretty much just like me and, and like maybe my mom, if she's having a, a, a slow day, that's actually looking at it. <laughs> so it's like, it's like the opposite of mission critical. Like it's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, cool. Well, let me ask you just one last question and then we'll wrap it all up. So, uh, so with regard to kind of making a final decision on like, is Beaver Builder right for me? Should I try it out? Am I the right kind of person for this? Uh, like if you could give somebody like a, like a piece of advice, like what would you get for helping them decide whether or not, you know, Beaver Builder is going to be right for them and their clients. And, uh, and then that will kind of help people say, hey, you know what, this is good for me or not. And then after, at the end of that, feel free to just say, you know, list out any websites or domain names or however they can get in touch with you or where they can, you know, what's the best place to go to, to get started if they feel like that's the right direction. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. That's kind of like a, like a slow, slow ball right down the middle of the plate for me, right? <laughs> Knock it down the park. Um, I, I think what I would recommend in terms of choosing tooling, page builders and anything else. So we offer a, a really flexible 30 day refund policy, like no questions asked. Um, you can purchase Beaver Builder, you can give it a test drive. Uh, and if it doesn't fit or if it doesn't work for you, if you find something you don't like, we're, we're glad to, to refund it. Um, and so I really, yeah, I would, I'd recommend trying out as, you know, as many different tools as time allows or, or, uh, you know, don't be afraid to kind of like give things a spin and we'd much rather someone take advantage of that refund policy and, and actually find something that works for them, um, than, than getting, you know, roped into using a tool that they, they end up not be, being happy with. Um, so that, and yeah, I think that applies to, to lots of, lots of different things, especially software. Software is easy. Like I was trying to buy snowboard boots, right? And they, <laughs> they wouldn't return or accept return on snowboard boots. Cause they're like, yeah, you know, you're going to go out and use it, sweat them for a day. Like we can't sell these back. You know, the software is really easy, you know, like, just, <laughs> um, and then yeah, in terms of getting in touch, uh, our website is wpbeaverbuilder.com. Uh, we are pretty active on Twitter and Facebook and social media. Um, we have a contact page there. I'm also pretty active on Twitter. Um, and my Twitter handle is at Robbie McCullough. Uh, so yeah, if anyone wants to reach out with any questions or, or comments, um, yeah, I'd love to hear them. Well, awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for, I know you, you're really, really busy and I really appreciate you taking a couple of minutes here to kind of work us into your schedule and, uh, and safe travels back from Mexico. And, uh, yeah, man, there's great talking to you. I really appreciate it. High five to you. Boop. Hey, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. <laughs>